Welcome back to the Aruba Quick Start video series. In this video, I'm going to be finishing up the deployment of an Aruba data center using Aruba Fabric Composer. In this video, I'm going to be performing the host facing configurations that we see here on the bottom four lines here uh, to ensure that we have host connectivity as well as VM connectivity between racks uh, so that we can communicate with those VLANs using the overlay configuration. So let's jump into that environment. So I'm going to start out by adding the integrations uh, that are so valuable within these uh, Aruba Fabric Composer solutions. So I'll start off by adding the ILO integration, which will actually start providing information to the administrator about the number of servers and details about those servers in the environment. I'll go to the uh, integration section under ILO. I will just click add and I'll give it a name here, ILO amplifier. Uh, username and password. Go ahead and apply that. And then next I will uh, add the vCenter environment uh, configurations. Uh, of course, we could also integrate with a Nutanix environment or NSXT or NetEdit, but for the purposes of this videos, uh, ILO amplifier and uh, vCenter will be very helpful. Okay, so I'll give it a name here, vCenter. This is a vCenter 6 dot environment. Give it a username. And password. Now here are the VLANs that we want Aruba Fabric Composer to be concerned about. So when Aruba Fabric Composer looks at these virtual switches within this hypervisor environment, uh, these are the VLANs that it will, if it sees these on virtual switches, it will automatically apply these to the attached interfaces on the physical switches. I'm going to enable discovery protocols, which is LLDP by default. This is a vCenter 6 environment. And I'm actually going to add another vCenter environment here, which is a, a SimpliVity environment. So I have a couple uh, SimpliVity hosts attached into this environment. Now, SimpliVity uses uh, standard V switches, so LLDP is not supported, so I will just uh, use uh, enable CDP for the discovery protocols here. And now we can see that both of those have been integrated into this environment. In fact, if I were to jump back into the dashboard, we can see now that ILO Amplifier is giving me information about my servers. You can see I've probably got some maintenance I need to do on my servers. So I'm already getting some information about the servers. But also, of course, up here, we're seeing information within the hypervisor environment, the number of hypervisors that exist within the environment, the number of kernels, the number of VM, VMs in the environment. If I jump into the switches, actually, I can go to my like top of rack switches. And we can see that we actually have VLANs, VLAN 10, 20, 25, 26, 30, 60, and 105. Well, 105 we created using the wizards, but all the others were just added using uh, because of the integrations is into this environment. And it's automatically applied those VLANs to the interfaces uh, that uh, are attached to those VLANs. Let's jump back into my um, vCenter environment. I mean, the Aruba Fabric Composer environment, and we've got the integrations added. So the next step I want to do is let's go ahead and add a link aggregation group between the switches in Rack 2. So I'll click on Configuration and Ports, and I'll go to Link Aggregation Groups. 
Here we can see the link aggregation groups that have been created already. This is created by the system, the inner switch links. But in this case, I'm going to add my own link aggregation group. I'll just call it a flag. Uh, let's call it 10. Okay, I'll click Next. Now I could select my switches here, and I will select a switch that's in uh, leaf 2A and leaf 2B. And it lists all of these interfaces for these switches side by side. I'm just going to click the Ports button here to resort things. So now you'll see I see ports 111 listed side by side for lease 2A and 2B. And these are the actual interfaces that I want to add into this lag. So it gives me a real simple, easy way to select these interfaces. And I'll click Next. And I'm going to do uh, LACP mode active because that's how the uh, switch is configured on the hypervisor side. And LACP interval slow. So leave everything at defaults here. Now, uh, with regards to the VLANs, let's do um, 10 to 30 here. Now, of course, if we did have VLAN groups created, we could apply a VLAN group to this, but we could also do it, as you're seeing here, uh, using a range. I'll just click Next and Apply. And we can see, of course, the configuration uh, has is now showing on the screen there. If I go to my switches, I can do show LACP interface. And I can see now I now have a multi-chassis link aggregation interface called LAG10 on ports 111 on both the local and the remote actor. And they're forwarding as expected. So the next thing we want to do is add a distributed SVI gateway. I want to ensure that these uh, VMs can communicate across, across uh, segments also. So let's go ahead and go into the routing system. I'm going to click VRF. Now we're in the default VRF. So I'm going to click on the uh, triple dots and click on IP interfaces so I can look at the IP interfaces within this environment. And I'm going to go ahead and simply add a new IP interface under the type. I will choose uh, distributed SVI. Let's do uh, VLAN 10. I will give it a range for that segment, an IP a a segment range for that, and I will choose a uh, active gateway IP address going to apply a MAC address to be used for this. And I'm going to give the uh, Fabric Composer a range to be used for the individual switches in the environment. Go ahead and click Next, give it a name here, VLAN 10 SVI. Click Apply. Now I'm going to go ahead and do that same thing, but now for uh, VLAN 20. I want to make sure VLAN 10 and 20 can communicate with each other. Okay, now let's actually just jump into the switches here. 
can go on to the leaf here and do show interface view and uh, 10. We can see the active gateway that's been applied to that uh, VLAN. We can see the individual IP address is within that range that I uh, that I just showed you or just configured. Show interface VLAN 20, same thing. So let's actually jump into the servers and make sure we have connectivity like we would expect at this point. So VLAN 10 can ping its gateway in rack one, and VLAN 10 can ping the VM in the other rack. And VLAN 10 can ping across segments. So I've got full connectivity. I'll see VLAN uh, 20 down here. Of course, VLAN 20 can also ping, of course, its gateway, and it can ping VLAN 20 in the other rack. And not surprisingly, of course, it can ping VLAN 10. So as a network admin, I'm happy. I've just used Fabric Composer to deploy my entire fabric, underlay, overlay, VSX configurations, as well as ensuring that the uh, host-facing VLAN configurations are all configured properly, which it did automatically for me. Now, before I leave you, let's actually jump into the uh, visualization section and take a look at what these integrations that we added during this step actually look like for us. So I'll click on visualizations and then hosts. And then down below, I have a uh, listing of all of the hosts that are seen in the environment as well as the VM NICs and the V switches that are they're attached to and of course we have a visual representation of the entire host if I hover over my if I hover my cursor over these uh, fields we will get some information of course the information is being provided uh, uh, as a combination of information from both ILO amplifier as well as vCenter so like, for example, if we didn't have ILO amplifier integrated, we wouldn't have, you know, obviously that type of information. Um, we can actually uh, launch a console directly into that host and even modify the UID indicators and the power levels. Um, of course, if I scroll down here, we can see the switches on the left. And then, of course, uh, Fabric Composer will visually represent how those switches are physically connected into the vCenter environment all the way down to the VM NIC, to the distributed switch, uh, all the way down to the port groups, and then even the VMs that are in the port group. So here I can click expand because we've got a number of VMs in there, and I can actually get information about these VMs all the way down to the port groups. This is really helpful when we're troubleshooting. A lot of times we're not getting connectivity, and we can come in here into this type of view, and we can easily see, oh, yeah, well, that VM's connected to the wrong port group. Uh, that's a common scenario. Uh, I can keep scrolling down, and, of course, we can see the other hosts in my environment. And of course, how they are all connected into the switches in my environment. So it's very handy. It's very helpful for uh, troubleshooting as well as configuring, as we saw, because of course, Aruba Fabric Composer will monitor these port groups. And if there's a, a device that's connected to these port groups uh, attached physically to our switches, and that VLAN is within that range that we specified here. Uh, then it'll go ahead and simply configure the switches for us automatically. Okay, so I hope that video was helpful. Um, stay tuned for more quick start videos and uh, have a great day.